start recording. We are recording. Hello. We are live. Hi. Caught me mid yawn there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome back. Hello. I'm going to try and get into a better position for you beautiful people. We are going to do a gloriously awkward uh, writer's corner update and I think it's like February recap. Yeah. And to start, um, we should probably talk about Chaos Nova real quick. Um, what did what did we do? I very recently I have written some very rough stories. Uh, in an attempt to quote unquote bridge the gap, but it's not really it's not really something I can share right now, but there is there is work going on in the background, I promise. Uh let, I think uh let's get to the whole bridge the gap thing later because that is more like mm -hmm. a content sort of thing, so it might even warrant its own its own chat. Ooh. Maybe. Um, and I've been working on some other bits and pieces as well, which if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know about. Uh, or if you follow at Chaos Nova, who t retweets most I'm, of my good I stuff. Am, I'm strategically opening all the things on screen now. So yeah, if you follow us on Twitter, you'll see that there's been I've been working on other projects like Outrunners and Harbour City, and and they have been an attempt to challenge myself, and in in that regard, they've been a huge success because my writing has improved in other areas. Uh, so at least I feel like it has. <laughs> so that's that's a positive. I think it's good to challenge yourself. Um, and then, and then I don't want to steal your thunder, but you yesterday uh, there was the release of something double awesome. Yes, that is actually why I wanted to make this recording. Uh, let okay. me let me share my screen with you as well. Webcam and screen share. I'll probably be pu pushing it. Ah, uh, oh, there we go. It went away. Okay, so bam. There will be some screen screenception here, but let's let's have it. So, uh, the second episode of the translation of Seeker is up. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so good. You can find it in the glorious Estonian web magazine called the Reactor. And you should totally be able to read Estonian as you do. <laughs> also, last night I did something that is uh, told people should never do: is uh, reading the review. You know, like reading the critique of your own thing. <laughs> Fortunately, it was positive. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, one one of the features in this magazine is uh, is that the, the collaborators, editors, I, I I don't know who is who exactly, but there was. They also give like a recap and commentary on the stories that are here. So there was also this this one's this one's for us. Uh oh. Oh cool. I can't I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see that they've included like links to our YouTube channel and that sort of thing. So that's that's awesome. And the Pinterest board as well. Yeah, so it turns out that uh, us putting our stuff up in the interwebs has paid off because it actually turns up in searches. And uh, I am not going to try to translate it on the go, but ah, 
Uh, uh, <laughs> see it? That, see that? See that? <laughs> I, I'm not sure if the second part lives up to this because uh, I was reading it uh, myself today and it felt like, oh my god, these chunks are so long and these inner monologues are kind of uh, dragging on and like it's 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 this um it's this weird uh i'm gonna put back my my mug now uh there so it's uh it's this weird thing that when when you are working on something then uh when you're really like inside the material then at some point you can no longer uh you can you can no longer produce the external perspective and then it's like uh you go through the uh, phases of uh yeah this is brilliant and then you go through the phase like language does not work everything is shit and then uh when you actually have to uh deliver the thing you can say you you get to this feel like Oh whatever, just <laughs> just just get it out of my out of my brain, out of my work desk, and like just 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 put it there, and and then when you read it back like a few months later, or or a month later, then it's like, ooh, okay, this uh, this does not flow well at all, and like oh, ooh, a another person might have done it a, a lot more differently. So it's like uh, when I was reading back the stuff that has been actually released in such a way uh, with my eyes I can sort of see that yeah I, I could totally use the input from another translating editing person and I, I, don't, I don't mean like uh, I, I have received some some comments from the uh, from the, from the story coordinator or story editor in in the magazine but I mean like somebody who would help to guide the translating process itself as in like you know the, the, the same thing that we do with the text generation just with the translation and mm. some somebody who is like more proficient in, in translation and such so basically when I when I read when I read our own stuff back or or my stuff back then uh, I can, I can tell that uh, it is not book quality, or like mm. it is, it is not the quality that I would want to see in an actual printed book. Like it's, it's the best I can do right now. <laughs> uh, and even if I work through with the same material more and more and more, it probably doesn't get any better. Like this, this is this is what I'm able to give, but uh, some. But uh, having seen two uh, pieces or two episodes uh, released now, uh, I'm looking at it like, yeah, I could use like a more pro translator's hand holding here and there, or like just it's, it's probably something where you can get a lot of mileage from little changes, and and I'm way too close to the process to actually see those things in perspective in time so it's like so there there's a lot of self doubt and a lot of uh uh a lot of uh mm, self awareness in this process let's let's put it like this i think you've done an amazing job <laughs> 9 out of 10 man that's 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 pretty impressive i wish I could read Estonian, and I may, ah. I may have to start learning um, Estonian <laughs> because I want to read the version that you've written. Right? I know there it's the, it's the same story, but it's there are differences, mm -hmm. right? You have to say in Estonian, you have to say things slightly differently to the way you'd say them in English, or it's, a lot uh, differently. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a lot more than just that. Uh, so it's like, uh, well, there's the word level, mm. and and you know the way you speak about things. Uh, there's the sure you can say you you could say this thing in Estonian, but why would you? Uh, and there are certain sequences of action and sequences of thought 
that I have either skipped over or rearranged completely because they, they just wouldn't work in Estonian. For mm. example, in the English version, there would be the, I don't know, the cleanup sequence, like off, after after Joel gets back from uh, from the bloody fights of the prison station, she lands in her uh, in in her shuttle and then there's like a sort of a sort of uh, flowing mundane routine how she cleans herself up and sets the course and all that and in Estonian I decided to leave it all out because it was just dragging on and it's like why are we saying this aloud like we can we can just assume that uh, that she cleans her herself up or whatever but uh, but certain things when explicitly uh, put into words in Estonian they are not taking the story forward mm. so it's like that's 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 why I keep saying it's not a translation it's an adaptation <laughs> yeah <laughs> adaptation yeah yeah so it, it would probably be interesting to uh, see how it is if you if you put the adaptation back into English how it would be then. <laughs> that would probably be interesting hmm. well fantastic job your legend I said yesterday we should un unbottle the champagne or uncork the champagne uh, maybe a glass of champagne and then save the bottle for when it's all done maybe when I turn up in September I'll have a bottle of champagne with me that would be nice. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, and uh, for the... I, I don't know how many uh, how many parts I will end up with. Uh, initially I planned six, but it might end up being seven? But uh, but in any case, uh, uh, the, the stories or the uh, story department editor has asked me to write a little summary about you know how it came to be and you know the <laughs> a little a uh, uh, little overview thingy uh, to accompany the the final episode so there will be that at some point oh, but that's, very that's cool. months that's months off at this point yeah still that's a nice touch I think mm -hmm. that's cool yeah. ah, well there you go yep and that was my February <laughs> <laughs> so at this at this point I have sent off the third part and uh, and I've, I've already started working on part 4 because uh, I did run out of time for part 3 because I, I was uh, I was facing some greater than usual focusing trouble and the week that I had set aside for just the translation, uh, ninety percent of that week ended up me me being like staring at the screen and like, oh, <laughs> I cannot words, <laughs> 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 and and uh, and uh, the month before that was all full of translating uh, user interfaces for the Latvians and all that. So there's. It's been a busy February, is what I'm trying mm. to say. It, it's been a hard year to get back into, I think. After the Christmas funk, and then we had a really good like work mm -hmm. period in, in near the end of January. And uh, I don't know, it's just been hard to get back into it. Well, uh, I can say for my part, it's it's not that it's not that it's hard to get into it. I just have so much other work that I physically mm. don't have the I, I, I don't have the available uh, nor to, uh, neither time nor the brain bandwidth <laughs> to you know even start getting into it yeah but uh, then again since we are still not earning anything from the seeker I am mm. sad to report I do have to uh, I do have to do regular other projects to just just to you know I mean I, I like to eat yep there is that eating is good <laughs> mm-hmm and uh, I need to build up the funds somehow to uh, 
to get the grand plan of moving to the countryside, uh, making that more realistic. So, so yeah, there is that. There's a lot going on. So let's return to what you've been up to. I will, I will uh, scroll your Twitter feed on the screen. Um, I'm trying to go back to the earliest point. What did I start doing? Um, Outrunners. Yeah, I think Outrunners was probably the first thing. Uh, I started writing. The target for the end of this year is to have an Outrunners story released. Mm -hmm. And I started writing one um, about Isabel, Izzy Jackson, Isabel Jackson, who's one of my Outrunner characters. And then I went backwards um, because I was like, I need to establish how all of this sort of happened and came about. So I I went back to when the storm occurred, Mm -hmm. like when everything started going to shit in the UK, basically. The Outrunners, yeah, the storm. Outrunners is uh, set in post-apocalyptic UK, basically. Some big events happened and it's forced everybody to the the bunkers underground. And uh, going back in time, I took a, a chunk of time in the early days from each character's perspective so you'd have one from Katie you'd have and then the next story short story would be like uh, either a few hours or a few days later and it would be from a different character's perspective Um, so they all stand alone as short stories but if you put them all together you get an idea of how and when and what's going on basically Um, so I I started writing that. I had great fun with that. That was a really good, enjoyable thing to write, and it helped me get a better idea of the story I want to tell with Isabel. But also, um, I've sent all that stuff off to um, one of our trusted readers, Claire, or one of the friends of the team, uh, and she is reviewing it. And she's just looking for stuff like really glaring, obvious plot mm-hmm. holes or when characters don't uh, behave how they've mm-hmm. been set out previously and that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, massive thanks to Claire for that. So she's making sure I'm not working in a vacuum. And then you've got, after that, um, I just had a spark of an idea. Um, I had an itch. And I wanted, <laughs> and I, and I, wanted to, <laughs> I had an itch, not the sort of type you go to the doctor about. Um, and <laughs> I, I just wanted to write the detective story. I've been, I've been wanting for years. <laughs> Heavily influenced by Joe Kender, First 48, you know, all these detective TV programs. And I've recently got into Castle, which is great. I absolutely love watching that. Um, and so I thought prior to the realization that I can work on things outside of Chaos Nova, I was like, I'm going to cram this story in here called The Hunt. And it's yeah. going to be like Logan Taylor, he's going to do his thing. And then it's going to relate to the whole larger Taking Flight Chaos yeah. Nova arc. You don't, I don't have to do that. Uh, yeah. I don't have, not, yeah. not everything has to relate to Carl Nova. So I've started writing my Harbour City, which is... Um, it's in New Jersey. It's set in the 80s. It's properly old school. Like The, the main character drives a Chevy Nova. For, just, <laughs> like, you know, just as a cute little thing. Um, and, yeah, I'm having a great time writing it. It's... I don't see where it's going. I think this is a problem that I'm, is going to happen. I don't... Because I'm just following it as they investigate it. They found a guy. He's been shot behind a, a quick shop. You know, like one of those mm. convenience stores. Um, he's been shot twice. And then his body's just been left there. And that... And then my detectives turn up on the scene. And they have to investigate it from there. I can foresee some problems in the I still haven't got a suspect I don't know who the suspect is but we're only five chapters in so we're still gathering yeah, evidence, but that's, that yeah, sort of uh, that, uh, I, I recently read somebody's uh, blog post about something similar is that if you write the mystery or, or a detective story where you don't know where it's going it is going to le- uh, it is going to produce some heavy uh, revising afterwards because since you don't know what the solution is you also don't know what uh, evidence to, to produce for your for your detectives and mm-hmm. 
while the whole oh I'm just going where my characters want to go <laughs> they are the detectives while this sounds very nice as a as a tweet from the craft perspe perspective it is it's kind of lazy it's, no it no it's, it's it's not lazy but it's 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 something that is very nice to put on a mug or a t-shirt but uh in the interest of a complete work that actually makes sense, that's utter bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so. 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 Yeah. It's. It's like yes. Uh, uh, what you're doing right now, I think they call it discovery writing, and it can totally work on its own, but it will. Uh, it will bring the need of uh, of some heavy uh, double checking and back checking and revising mm -hmm. later on. Oh yeah, definitely. But I, I'm enjoying it. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bit cheesy. The main character is called <laughs> Billy Domino, um, and I did a little bit of research. Domino is apparently a legit surname in Italy, so I don't feel too bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, you can, I, I, you, can, you can always tell Claire to come up with Italian names. And oh then, yeah, and then when definitely. somebody blames you, you can say, "Oh, what an actual Italian told me." <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the the. Um, not the forensic investigator, the guy who sort of does all the data and, f and digging up of financial files and things like that. He's called uh, Farinelli, and uh, I shared that with because uh, it's because it's <clears throat> I've I've got it in my head. It's it Harbour City is a city that was sort of built on prohibition, and there's a few casinos and that kind of thing. It's a bit of a dodgy city, and I imagine there's there was because it's on the east coast of America. There would have been like some immigration, so you'd have had the Italians, you've had the Irish, you'd have had all those sorts of people moving over in, very, in the very early days, right? Not in like the eighties when we're running the story, but I think there would be some of that in there, like there is in New York. Like you get your Italian sectors, and you get your um, uh, I am not the person to to discuss this with. This yeah, is and this, this is something you have to use your Ameri American connection. Yeah, to and this clarify. is the other thing. It's great that I've got another friend, Chrissy, who's helping me with all this stuff. So she will like she's American, and I send her these files, and she's like, "Yeah, it's good, but instead of saying car park, parking lot." <laughs> There's no you in harbour, so there's it's all things like this that uh, she's really helping me with, and uh, yeah, it's important to because I I've been to America maybe once or twice, I think maybe twice, <laughs> and I was in the very much the touristy part, right? I didn't go to any of the cities. We were in Florida, and that was that was that. Um, so my knowledge of America is very limited, but it comes from the movies. Yes, absolutely. Um, but that's such a fascinating world for me. I wanted to, I wanted to at least attempt it. And because I've attempted these things, because I've sort of pushed the boundaries a little bit with Arbor City and uh, Outrunners, uh, because I've challenged myself, I feel like my writing is improving. But you still like, you feel like, okay, this is this is progress. But you still like this. This could still be better. Like right? you, I think it's not imposter syndrome. What's the thing? Like the more you learn, the less you know. Does that? Uh, I think that leads up to the imposter syndrome. Is that hmm. you are aware of all the all the things that might not be working? I, I think we're in a similar territory here. So I am in a similar territory with the uh, with the translation, adaptation, editing, and you are in the similar ter territory with the writing. Although I still say that uh, uh, the Seeker Estonian adaptation probably would flow better if uh, if I was working hand in hand with an, with a more seasoned uh, fiction editor translator because at times uh, I, I, I am painfully aware that uh, I am not a proficient uh, fiction editor not in Estonian anyway English is easy, <laughs> but uh, but in Estonian I am not. Uh, I'm definitely not the proficient uh, fiction editor. I am a bloody copywriter. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just I, I. This this is why for me it's important to have people like you, Claire, and and Chrissy there. 
because I don't, you've seen Split Personality, you've seen Shell Shock, you know mm. I'm, I'm like when I work in a vacuum, and I have. It's just nice to have someone else there mm. to give some input and say, oh hey, this isn't working. Maybe maybe you should try this instead. Um, so I think that's important to have assistance in some in some cases, not all the time. We were talking about this last night in Discord mm. that they uh, <clears throat> Shmoo Shmoo Legendary Shmoo. He's using an art program, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> he's using an art program, and we were talking about how, well, you shouldn't really complain about it because it's, f- he was saying you shouldn't really complain about complain about it because it's free, and then he later went on to say, well, actually, it's one of these programs that's sort of made by council, <laughs> like, because it's, because it's, it's freeware, it's... I am made by committee. Yeah, basically, too many cooks spoil the broth, uh, sort of deal going on. And, uh, uh, yeah, there's uh, having been part of media development team for several years. Uh, I think uh, it's like there are several stages, or like there there are there are aspects to the production pipeline and the idea generation, some of which work better when there's less people working on it. Some of them work better when there's more people working on it. And of course, you, you do need to have... Th- those parts need to be communicated and work together. But basically, uh, initial idea generation, brainstorming, all that. That's where, that's where it's good if you have, I don't know, a bunch of a dozen. Then getting those first ideas out in any sort of like... Distilling the concept is something that is better done with fewer people, and also first draft is some is something that is better to do alone or with fewer people, and then expanding that distilled first concept into a slightly uh, more refined outline is again where you want at least a few more people, and then you can assign. Uh, small teams or, or single people people to specific problems mm-hmm. or specific tasks so it's like I have it all figured out <laughs> <laughs> obviously <laughs> we, we, we're professionals here we know what we're doing <laughs> but also also I am showing schmooze uh, website on the screen while we're while we're at it excellent with the little running man <laughs> yeah <laughs> so good. <laughs> All right, and then and then to and then to wrap it up, um, I, I sort of the goal was to finish Outrunners, uh, short stories first draft and Harbor City, uh, first draft by the beginning of March. That hasn't happened, but it has allowed me to reassess how I set myself goals and to make more reasonable demands of myself in the mm-hmm. future. Um. But also, um, I got hit. I got hit by the itch again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the day before, I think it might have been the day before. I got hit by a super itch, and these are the ones that you can't ignore, no matter how hard you try. You've got to get these words down, and that was for a a series of non currently non canon first draft, absolutely just a bit of fun stories that I'm referring to as the bridge in the gap section. Um, which is my attempt to to bridge the gap between like the old when it was space chaos at darkbb.com stories. We are talking and... about Chaos Nova story arc now. Yes, yeah, we're back in Chaos Nova. Um, originally, uh, before before the times of the editor, let's say, um, we ran SerenityRP.com forums and we ran. Uh, spacechaos.comforums.com and we built up a lot of stories on them like Taking Flight for example and that kind of thing um, and we had a lot of adventures and then as as me and you started talking to one another and getting involved um, we started getting into this newer sort of storytelling arc where we're beyond um, like the interdimensional boogeymen and deja vu and educators and all stuff like that started coming up and, and the universe became uh, with your with your input you were able to make the places more real uh, like, a lot of that shit was there before 
Like the educator it was thought out. Coyotes. Well, nothing was thought out. No, th this is the thing, right? So it's it's like you've got the old unthought sort of bits of good ideas are there, and and if you pull them together, there's a story there, like yeah. Up but traffic. basically, so so uh, I think uh, let's wrap it up. Okay. Uh, this is this is a story for another day. Mm -hmm. Also, the uh, Chaos Nova arc is a is a longer talk, and the layers of <laughs> collaboration and layers of development within the forums and outside the forums and in the storylines is uh, is is a much bigger topic. And also, uh, as much as I like taking credit for certain world building issues I do not want to shit on other people who have worked out a lot before me so yeah no that's fair enough let's let's not go there right now okay so and I think that's fair enough we'll save this for we'll talk about the origins of the forum and all that good stuff in another yeah, video this, that, this is like that's we could we could talk about that for days yeah we could oh, do God, like yeah. a day long live stream Ooh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <There's> <laughs> we could really? do like a March live stream uh, reminisce which would be in a very very sloppy format where we reminisce and uh, and and spit take and and uh, and do all that. That'd be awesome. We'll get the gang together. Oh look, a plan has been formed. Uh, <laughs> we shall speculate and discuss this and organise something. Oh look at that. Maybe, maybe we can even get some of our uh, more elusive crew to show up. Hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for watching, oh, no, no, guys. No, 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 I'm not oh, wrapping right, okay, up the video okay. yet. I was just, uh, I was just putting a cap on your frothing, uh, <laughs> misguided talk. I, I wanted to, uh, so, I, I, I wanted to lead into a, a little bit more elaborate outro sequence. So, oh. February. It has been long. Uh, there's snow and cold now. Uh, I wanted to end up with the questions like, what are we playing? What are we reading? What are we watching? But uh, <laughs> let's let's just wrap it up. Okay. I haven't really been doing a whole lot other than working. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's been work, lots of work. Yeah. So let's wrap it up here. Mm -hmm. And uh, see what else, what March shall bring. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much you. for watching. Bye.